Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, Enstrom delivers the first Model 480BG with a Garmin G1000 A. A Southern California flight school may be a scam and a security threat, and a rare O46 will be restored to flying condition. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. When talking about a Garmin G1000 glass cockpit, a lightweight helicopter is probably not the first thing that comes to mind. Well, now that's changed. The first Instra Model 480 BG has been delivered to Rick Boswell of New Hampshire with the Garmin G1000H glass cockpit installed. Certification of the 480 BG was completed in July, making the 480 BG the only helicopter in its class offering this sophisticated electronic equipment. Boswell said, quote, I'm a tech junkie, and when I heard about the Garmin G1000H, I had to have it, end quote. The Enstrom 480BG is the third helicopter model certified for the G1000H and has a stacked configuration. Enstrom says the configuration just made sense in their aircraft because it mimics the current 480B configuration, allowing seamless transitions. It also makes the screens equally accessible from both seats, which is important in training. A group of two dozen Indonesian flight school students who had signed up for training at Accessible Aviation International and California Flight Center in Long Beach, California, found themselves in the middle of what looks like a scam when the offices of the school were suddenly vacated. It's reported the students had paid as much as $55,000 for their training, housing, and insurance. The owner of the building where the school was located said the school's operator, Mac Patel, had emptied out the offices of everything but a flight simulator when he was unable to pay the rent. The housing administrator had informed the students that the rent has not been paid and there is now the issue as to the status of their student visas. Federal authorities, including the FAA and the Department of Homeland Security, are looking into whether Patel broke any laws governing flight schools and if there is any threat to national security since foreign students were involved. After these messages, a rare World War II warbird comes back to life. Stay tuned. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Well, we're all aware of the World War II glamour airplanes like the P-51 and the B-17. However, there were also airplanes that worked and fought hard, but never get mentioned, such as the case of the Douglas O-46. For two decades, a Douglas O-46 observation aircraft has been hankered at the Combat Air Museum in Topeka, Kansas. The plane was recently sold to a private individual in Michigan who plans to have the plane restored to flying condition. It's reported that when the O-46 is restored, it will be one of only four flying examples of the World War II observation aircraft in airworthy condition. It's understood the new owner plans to fly it at air shows around the country. After its restoration, the O-46 will be named Banjo after a mule that was the mascot of the Missouri National Guard to which it was attached. Appropriate nose art will adorn the plane. It's Friday at last and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief to check in for his weekly barnstorming commentary. NBAA 2014 is just around the corner, and Jim reminds us it's not just about the biz jets. Most of business aviation flies smaller GA aircraft. Here's this week's barnstorming. 
Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, MBAA 2014 is right around the corner. Amazing things happening. Gulfstream's got new announcements, and we're hearing about new avionics systems, new airplanes, new engines, and let's face it, uh, for an aviation journalist, it's manna from heaven. We get to cover a bunch of very exciting things, a lot of great technologies, and in no uncertain terms, there is more than enough to cover even for the entire ANN news team. We'll bring you the best and brightest from there over the next few days. We'll start uh, Monday with Airborne and work our way through the week, and we hope you enjoy what we have to present. And most important, I hope you'll be enthused and impressed by what the business aviation community can bring forth to not only build up business, but build up this nation. And boy, if there was a time it needed it, now's it. At the same time, while there's going to be extraordinary Gulf Streams and extraordinary DSOs and eclipses and Honda Jets and Cessnas and so forth, I want to talk about where business aviation really thrives, where business aviation is its most active, where business aviation is doing some of its most extraordinary work. It's the man or woman who jumps into a Cessna 172 and visits the stores they have around the state. It's the Piper pilot that jumps into their twin Comanche and heads off in search of new business, new clients, and new opportunities. It's the guy doing uh, patrol and of his crops and looking over fields and things from a Piper Cub. There are so many ways for aviation to do business, for ways for aviation to augment the business community in this nation. And the best part is many of them start with simple little piston singles and twins that don't burn jet fuel and aren't as sexy as a Gulfstream or a Deso or any of these things, but for their own reasons are an incredibly important part of our infrastructure. I am hoping that MBAA, who has given some attention and more than a little bit of lip service to the concept of very basic business aviation, will do its best to encourage, to promote, to enhance, and to help those small business people with small airplanes succeed. Business aviation doesn't mean just business jets. It means Robinson R-22s. It means Cessna 172s. It means twin Comanches. It means all kinds of aircraft under the sun, whether it be an A-36 or a Piper Cub. But if an airplane is being used to further the business of this nation, and most important, the business of small business people who know that mobility, who know that flexibility, and know that an airplane could give them all that is one of the most important things around, well, let's face it, then we're on the right track. MBAA, God bless the Jets, but don't forget the little guys. They are the backbone. They are the basis. They are the foundation of business aviation. For the Air News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. A full-size mock-up of the V280 Valor third-generation tilt rotor was unveiled Monday at the Association of the United States Army annual meeting in Washington, D.C., the aircraft is being designed for the Joint Multi-Role Demonstrator and Future Vertical Lift programs. A unique feature of this aircraft is that the rotor drive system tilts while the engines themselves remain stationary. Bell says the aircraft can cruise at 280 knots with a combat range of 500 to 800 nautical miles. The V-280 is in a detailed design phase. Assembly of the first flying aircraft will begin next year with the first flight planned for September 2017. After the break, we'll find the place where fly-ins are not welcome. You're watching Airborne. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer, get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Well, fly-ins are as old as aviation itself, and everybody loves them. But here's a situation where a flying organization was told, don't bring your fly-in here. 
Judy Birchler founded the Ladies Love Tail Draggers organization so that she and like-minded women could get together and enjoy their passion for tail dragger airplanes. Birchler thought the beautiful setting of a lodge, complete with an airport at Lake Murray, Oklahoma, might be a perfect place for the Ladies Love Tail Draggers to hold a regional fly-in. However, when Birchler made the call to the lodge, they didn't even seem to know that their airport existed. She then contacted the state park manager, who apparently views the airport as a liability rather than an asset to the park, something they have to put up with until the state closes it. Birchler said on the Ladies Love Tail Draggers blog, quote, Don't get me wrong, their refusal to even consider allowing our group to come to their airport had nothing to do with our ladies, but it had everything to do with them not wanting any group of airplanes landing at their strip, end quote. It was reported that Advisory Circular 9157 was canceled. This is the circular that provides voluntary operating procedures for model aircraft flyers. AC 9157 has been in the news recently because of its application to the new generation of small unmanned aerial systems and new interpretations of its guidance. The sudden and unannounced cancellation of AC 9157 by the FAA caught everyone by surprise, including the FAA. While the FAA did issue a memorandum of cancellation and deleted the advisory circular from their website, the FAA now says they didn't mean to do it. Rich Hansen from the Academy of Model Aeronautic Organizations Government and Regulatory Affairs Office wrote on the AMA Government Relations blog that the FAA admitted to the error. The FAA continues to work on regulations regarding UAS and model aircraft operation. And when those rules are published, AC 9157 will be canceled again for real. It remains to be seen how these proposed regulations will affect true model aircraft hobbyists. Join the Aero News Network at the MBAA Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition, the world's largest and most important business aviation event, October 21st through the 23rd in Orlando, Florida. Ranked as the fourth largest trade show in the U.S., NBAA 2014 will feature over 1,000 exhibitors showcasing the latest products and services in the industry. But if you can't be there yourself, let ANN bring the show to you. Our daily era news reports will cover events, products, and keep you updated on the latest of what's happening in business aviation. We'll be bringing you episodes of Airborne every day from the show as we talk to the people in the business about the business of business aviation. Join Aero News for the next best thing to being there. Well, that's our program for October 17th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.